Today we are going to talk about something called virtue ethics. Now, virtue ethics as I write over here, it says that attitudes over actions, he is virtuous, his moral actions only flow, flow from him. Now, let us recapitulate. Now, we have been doing uh, uh, a few kinds of ethics before. We have talked about uh, deontological ethics, we have talked about consequentialism as an ethical theory. Consequentialism said that, well, the consequences of an action determine uh, what a right action is. Uh, deontological uh, theories uh, uh, claimed that there was an, uh, a rule or a formula to determine the right action. Basically, the question that we have been tackling is whether, uh, what is the means of determining the right action. This question of course, uh, assumes the answer to a uh, uh, to the earlier more fundamental meta ethical question is that, uh, can there be an objective right and wrong? If there is an objective, if there can be an objective right and wrong, how do we determine this objective right and wrong? So, basically there are two questions. First is, can there be a right or a wrong? And two, if yes, so, basically we are uh, uh, associated with uh, two questions. Now, the first question talks about, can there be an objective right and wrong? Now, uh, this is the meta ethical question that we have talked about. Now, if the answer to this question is yes, which we have seen earlier uh, that the answer to this question has been yes, and we will uh, re be visit uh, revisiting these qu uh, this question again and again. Uh, but if we assume this as yes, now from the meta ethical theory, we come to the theory of to the level of moral theory. How do we determine the right and wrong? Now, one answer to this was uh, consequentialism the second answer to this was uh, deontology and what we are going to talk today about is virtue ethics okay now if you would remember the earlier classifications that we have made is that well this is a foundational meta ethical question that debating the possibility of uh, uh, the moral domain uh, this is the deepest question above which is the, uh, the question of moral theory that if there is an objective right and wrong how do we determine what is the theory um, about determining the objective right and wrong and this is the third level uh, which we talked about was applied ethics so these applied ethics uh, talks questions about applications of these moral uh, uh, theories, moral theories such as consequentialism, deontology and virtue ethics as we talked about. Applied ethical questions could be like, well, uh, uh, is it morally right to abort uh, a fetus? Uh, is, is software piracy uh, uh, morally justified? Now, these are applied questions. Now, in our uh, uh, exploration of uh, uh, moral theories. We have talked about consequentialism, deontology and today we will talk about the third major theory which is called virtue ethics. Now, what does virtue strike us as? Uh, does it uh, mean of, uh, uh, does it uh, give us a notion of a medieval uh, uh, puritan uh, social norm or what does virtue do? Now, well, uh, 
the, the, the catch line here says attitudes over actions. He is virtuous, he is virtuous, his moral actions only fro, uh, flow from him. Now, let us take a look at the slide. Now, till now we have been exploring moral theories that are in the form of rules, principles and formulae to predict the right course of action. Is this how we actually reason? And are we missing some component of the moral domain? Virtue ethicists claim the importance of virtues and vices in moral theorizing. The question to ask is, what sort of person ought we to be rather than how do we decide on which act is to be chosen. Virtue ethicists claim that the former is more basic than the later. Okay. And now, uh, if this is broadly the, the layout of the entire uh, uh, domain of moral philosophy, we are now trying to do moral, uh, trying to uh, understand moral theories of the three major moral theories we have talked about consequentialism and deontology. Today, we talk about virtue ethics. Now, what is virtue ethics? Now, the claim of the claim of virtue ethics starts with Uh, we have talked about principles, rules and consequences. Are these enough to explain um, the moral domain or is there something, uh, something lacking? Now, there have been many philosophers who have found it insufficient. Now, let us introspectively look, how do we, uh, 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 an instance of moral reasoning that we may go through in life. Uh, let us say, I have uh, uh, found a, a, a gold coin on the road. Do I pick it up or do I not pick it up? Now, how do we actually decide whether we are going to, uh, whether I am um, going to pick up that uh, gold coin that I see lying on the road or I am not going to pick up? There can be various combinations. First combination is, well first I see that there are people seeing me. so. Uh, if I pick it up and they would know that, well it does not belong to me. So, perhaps I would be known as a thief, but the value of the gold coin is uh, enormous for me to jump that uh, uh, taboo. Maybe the, uh, another situation where there are, and there is nobody looking and I can quietly pick it up. Thirdly, I think of the consequences, right. If I am a consequentialist, I think that, well, if anybody who uh, uh, people stop uh, returning uh, lost and found items, well uh, the trust level uh, comes down in a collective and that is harmful in the long term. So, I should not uh, uh, pick up the coin. Uh, let us let's, uh, let's make this example simpler. Let us say, I see the coin and I do not pick it up. What can be the reasons for it, right? First, consequences. Let us say that, well I see uh, picking up the coin uh, uh, erodes uh, the general trust factor among uh, the collective, say the society or the collective I belong to and therefore, I do not pick it up. Another factor could be, well deontology or I, I, I uh, do not pick up the coin, because I, I have been uh, uh, told by my religion to follow a rule that you shall not uh, take what does not belong to you. Say, I am deontological. Say, uh, if I am uh, the Kantian uh, uh, deontological, then I would say that, well, if I had lost a coin, would I expect somebody, uh, the, would I expect the finder to return it to me? If I would expect so, then I would uh, return, uh, pick up the coin and return it to or, or uh, try to uh, have a look out for who the uh, owner of the coin is or if I do not just pick up the coin, I'll, I would uh, function as a principle that well what I do not, uh, what does not belong to me, I shall not take it. Now, these are the same actions under two perspectives that well, 
I do not pick up the coin. Now, there is a third perspective that people have talked about that is called uh, because of my virtue or more easily my character, character traits. Now, I could also not pick it up, not as a matter of habit or tendency, but as a matter of my choice of how I have decided to be as a person, to uh, not uh, suppose uh, take in, uh, to not take in the, uh, to not uh, acquire what does not belong to me. Now, that is a character trait, right not acquire others property covertly. Now, if this is a, a, a character that I have that I am uh, just not uh, comfortable or I have decided that it is not right for me to uh, steal. I, I consider this as stealing or if I just do not uh, have internalized it that well, it is my predisposition, it is my character that I do not uh, uh, want to acquire somebody else's property uh, when it is lost and I do not, uh, I am not earning it. Now, is not this closer to the virtue ethicists would say that this is the way it is closer to the reasoning that takes place in our uh, mind. Now, look at it this way. In such a moral predicament, are we thinking by rules, are we thinking by deontology, are we thinking by consequentialism? Well, the virtue ethicists say that well, we act out of our character. Again, not to be confused with tendency or behavioral patterns, but are uh, thought through and decided choices. Virtue ethicists claim the importance of virtues and vices in moral theorizing. So, there is something called virtue, which has not been accounted for, when we uh, uh, go in for moral theorizing. We have talked about consequences, we have talked about rules, but is not there something left out of the moral domain, which is essential to make full sense of the moral domain. It is about being human, it is about having character traits. Now, it is not that uh, uh, um, uh, uh, a brave person, a person who exhibits the courage of virtue, uh, the virtue of courage or bravery is always brave, but it is that it is a part of his character trait of his uh, 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 moral makeup that he chooses to be. Uh, uh, a brave person. So, give, uh, when confronted with the situation and if he finds uh, uh, the odds um, uh, of uh, or the risks of uh, uh, courage uh, less than the drive of the character trait, then he should, then he would straight go ahead with the courageous act. So, what uh, taking a look at the slide, what the uh, virtue ethicists are talking about in the last bullet is that the question to ask is what sort of a person ought we to be, rather than how to decide on which act is to be chosen. Virtue ethicists claim that the former is more basic than the latter. Now, what sort of a person ought we to be? Is that is a question and the other question is how to decide on which act mm, is to be chosen. Now, the various theories that we have uh, uh, come across right now are answering the second question that is how to decide on which act is to be chosen. Virtue ethicists claim that the former is more basic than the later. Now, this is a question, what sort of person ought we to be? This is a question of, uh, of the various moral theories, but how to decide what act is to be chosen? Now, these are two crucial questions, which would determine our stand on moral theory. Now, virtue ethicists claim that the former is more basic than the later that what sort of a person ought we to be? That is the crucial question. Are we going to be, uh, what kind of a character trait? So, when we say what kind of a person, we actually mean what character trait or disposition. 
that we exhibit. Now, whereas on the second one, we either rule governed, rule or consequence governed. Now, coming to the next slide, why do we talk about uh, virtue ethics at all? Well, we as moral agents do not need a theory to give us the right course of action or a subset of principles formulae to arrive at the right action. This is uh, quite evident when we talked of the uh, agent finding a coin example. Well, we really do not uh, go through uh, moral reasoning in the form of theories or principles and formulae to arrive at the right action. We simply reflect or it is our character that determines the choice we make. Now, a person, a thief would perhaps pick it up instinctively. He has internalized it into his character. His respect for property rights is uh, negligible. Now, what we need to know, uh, what we need is to know about what kind of a person we ought to be. And the answer to this question will also determine the actions we do, the choices we make. Now, this is interesting. Now, what kind of a person will we be? Now, that determines our actions. Now, let us say, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, law enforcement uh, agencies uh, uh, putting forth claims that, well, this, these, um, um, if, if you would remember, if you have been through any of the railway stations in uh, India, it has uh, a rogues gallery, a picture put up of uh, rogues gallery. And these are photos of habitual criminals who have been caught to alert passengers. Now, what is a rogue? A rogue is one, well, uh, as per uh, a virtue ethicist's understanding and as put forth um, by the policeman in the uh, gallery of rogues uh, on various stations is that, well, these are people of uh, who are uh, of a uh, character pattern or who have character traits which are, which do not respect the general moral uh, ethos of uh, the time of then and there. So, a thief is somebody who is of uh, 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 a character that he does not or she does not uh, respect property rights. So, well, given an opportunity, uh, the thief would go ahead for and steal whatever is available. Any, any, uh, 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 as once a uh, 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 policeman once told me that, well, for any crime to occur, there are two, uh, uh, two, two uh, factors required. The first is temptation and the second is opportunity. Now, if one is not uh, stealing or one is not succumbing to uh, or one is not uh, um, involved in an act of crime, because one does not have an opportunity, well, that is only one factor taken away. Now, in this two factor analysis of the policeman, where it talked about temptation and opportunity. Temptation is the one that stands for the uh, virtue of the agent. Now, taking a look at the slide, if I put the policeman's interpretation, temptation plus opportunity tends to give the act, right. In this case, the criminal act. Now, it is this temptation, which is the domain of virtue, whether to be tempted or not. That is an exemption, example of virtue, to be tempted or not. Now, many of us find the uh, uh, gold coin lying um, on the road. How uh, And uh, if any uh, of us find it there, there is the opportunity, but whether we are tempted or not. Now, if uh, now, let us let us uh, uh, threadbare analyze what is it to have the virtue of uh, honesty or uh, non covetousness to um, unearned property, right. Now, if uh, let me write that down for your uh, clarification. Now, suppose this is the uh, 
uh, the attitude that I display that not coveting or uh, acquiring the property that one has not earned. Now, giving into this uh, temptation is uh, displaying your character. Now, there are uh, uh, when we let us take the same example that there are so many agents x, y and z all who find uh, the gold coin and who did not pick it up. Now, x did not pick up the gold coin because he is afraid that he would be punished, he would get caught and be punished. X does not display virtue ethics, the reason the moral reasoning is definitely not virtue ethics. Y does not pick up the gold coin, because he is afraid that others might uh, uh, see him and uh, call him a thief. Again Y does not display virtue ethics. Uh, Z does not pick it up, because he says that my religion uh, bans me to do it. Again that is not an example of virtue ethics, but let us say another person say A. A does not pick it up, because he thinks that well, uh, it is a part of his character trait that well I should just should not uh, take what does not belong to me, not coveting or acquiring uh, unearned property. Now, if this is the sentence that we look at, not coveting or acquiring unearned property. Now, here A is displaying an example of uh, a virtue that well, uh, given the opportunity also, he finds it wrong. It is uh, his law abide may, uh, his abiding by the norm or the law is only because he does not have the temptation to do it. In fact, he has the desire to uh, concur with the law rather than break it. Now, so here we talk about the preliminary thing is if you take a look at the slide, it is the character of the agent is prior to the uh, actions of the agent. Now, this is a crucial distinction which virtue ethics talks about. The character of the agent is prior or more fundamental than the actions of the agent. Now, actions flow from the character, this character is the cornerstone of moral theorizing. Now, if I say that character is more uh, fundamental than actions, this would uh, include that well, uh, it is not that well somebody who has been uh, not stealing all his life, becomes a good person or uh, displays the virtue of honesty. Well, there could be various reasons for the, that person not to steal, it could be the lack of opportunity, it could be the lack of uh, 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 courage, it could be uh, a fear of uh, uh, punishment in the other world. But if mm, the person does not steal, because he finds stealing unworthy of him, of this being an internalized thought through character trait, a decision that one will not covet others property or unearned or found property, that is an example of virtue ethics. Now, let us take a look at the next slide. Well, Aristotle in the western tradition was the first one to talk of or Plato and Aristotle both to give example of virtue ethics. Uh, Aristotle's notion of ethics has been claimed as one of the earliest examples of virtue ethics. Aristotle claims eudaimonia or human flourishing or happiness as the goal of life and actions ought to be performed with this goal in mind. This has been variously critiqued. One perspective is that functionality, the goal is a result of a reason or rationality in the human agent, not the other way round. Another perspective is why the goal of the moral agent or man is unique to him or her. Modern virtue ethics do not have to take the neo Aristotelian approach. Now, well, let us take a look at this. Now, Aristotle has claimed that well, uh, uh, Aristotelian ethics was about uh, virtues. We talked, he did not talk about principles, he did not talk about consequences, but he has talked about characters or qualities that need to be developed. And why do they need to be developed? They need to be developed for uh, what he termed as eudaimonia or uh, human flourishing. And uh, 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 as, as the second bullet reads, Aristotle claims eudaimonia or human flourishing or happiness as the goal of life and actions ought to be performed with this goal in mind. 
this has of course, been variously critiqued that why is the goal or uh, a result of reason or uh, rationality in the human uh, agent and not the other way around that well, it is our rationality that brings us forth uh, that gives us uh, reasons to act or that makes us develop our character traits. Another perspective is why the goal of the moral agent is unique to him or her. The Aristotelian way of thinking is making flourishing most important. So, it brings uniqueness to each individual. Each individual is moral for his own reason. And that reason is eudaimonia. Modern virtue ethics, of course, do not take this neo Aristotelian approach. Now, what about modern virtue ethics? Well, there have been many ancient strains of virtue ethics, both in the Indian and the Chinese traditions, too. Modern virtue ethics uh, was given a new start or uh, originates uh, in the 1950s with uh, Anscombe's seminal paper titled modern moral philosophy. Since then, Alasdair McIntyre and many other contemporary philosophers have carried forward virtue ethics in its modern avatar. Now, let us look at this. What is a virtue? Because this uh, uh, distinction or this clarity is uh, important, if we want to know uh, um, proceed further about virtue ethics. Because we would constantly be facing this question that perhaps uh, a virtue is nothing over and above uh, uh, principles or rules, but we will leave that for later. Right now, well, what is a virtue? A virtue is not a habit or tendency to act in a certain manner. So, uh, suppose we have uh, instincts, suppose you have been trained to stand up when uh, uh, a lady arrives. Uh, or enters the room, that is a part of your training, it is become a part of your habit. Well, a virtue is more of a decided or thought through disposition. It is just a thought through disposition, not a predisposition, uh, also a predisposition can be said. Uh, it is a thought through disposition to orient one's actions for the simple reason that it is that kind of an action. That means, we have uh, decided to be honest only because our love for honesty, right. Honesty for its own sake. So, when we are valuing honesty for its own sake, that is a kind of a virtue and not uh, for the consequences it brings along. For example, being truthful is a virtue only when one decides to be truthful, not for any other reason, but only because one values and wants to be truthful. The truthful agent is not amused by tales of chicanery, pities or despises uh, dishonesty and is not surprised by the triumph of honesty. So, let us look at what, what is meant by uh, a virtue. As we talked about, a virtue is not uh, is not a, 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 a habit or a tendency. Say, I have the tendency to overeat. Now, that is not a vice or a virtue uh, per se, but if I have uh, uh, over years cultivated my uh, attitude to uh, say self aggrandizement or uh, to, to courage or I think that well a courageous act is a good act, because it is courageous, not because it yields something or leads to something. Now, something which is intrinsically valuable. So, um, uh, an act of bravery is uh, uh, flows from the uh, virtue of courage, but that courage uh, or when a decision is taken. Let us again put this forth in an example that would perhaps uh, make it very clear what is meant by virtue. Now, if, if I, uh, let us say an agent, uh, uh, let us use the familiar x, y and z. Now, x, y and z uh, uh, find uh, a girl uh, drowning in the sea. They are at uh, the seashore and they would like to go uh, and uh, uh, each one of them chooses to uh, 
rescue the girl in their respective scenario. Now, if uh, uh, X or Y or Z, all three of them do the same action of uh, rescuing the drowning girl, but they do it for various reasons. What is their reasoning that takes place? Now, the virtuous uh, or a virtue ethicist's claim is that, well, when one does an act of courage, well, when one is evaluating the uh, risks, it was consciously or subconsciously, voluntarily or involuntary, of taking the plunge into the uh, sea to save the girl. Say, uh, on, on the cons, it is that, well, it is a risky operation, it, I, I might be pulled and uh, drowned by the drowning girl, uh, I am not very good in swimming, there is perhaps nobody to help uh, around and whatever the list of uh, cons are, pros are, well, I can save the girl's life, it will uh, 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 perhaps get me an award, it will get me recognition from people around, it will uh, um, uh, uh, get me a new friend. Uh, if I am able to save the girl. So, there are various uh, uh, dimensions that go on, but if just that this is an act of courage to take a risk to save a person, if that is in one of the pros, that is an example of virtue. So, uh, just as I am, I am uh, uh, courage is a virtue, whereas habitual trainings like uh, 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 etiquettes are not strictly examples of virtue. Say, uh, if, if I am um, uh, trained to eat with my uh, uh, lips shut, it will not strictly be an example of a virtue, it will be an example of uh, etiquette of a particular culture. right? Now, if I am, however, uh, 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 if I feel like sharing my food, e uh, even if I have little with somebody who has none and is starving, that is an example of generosity. And I do this only because I uh, uh, value generosity and I would like to be generous and with no other example. So, uh, notice virtue is a very interesting notion. It makes our fundamental uh, attitudes uh, as the source of our actions. Now, what would be the other way round of reasoning? Well, we would say that uh, somebody who does a lot of uh, uh, generous acts is a generous person, but the virtue ethicist's way of saying is that a generous person does uh, uh, generous acts. So, generosity is first as a virtue or a character trait and um, the acts follow from it, not the other way around. So, whether I am to be generous or not depends on whether I value generosity intrinsically per se. So, uh, I will be hungry if I sh uh, spare my food for the starving person, but I feel uh, I value generosity more than what I value this. Now, of course, now in such a uh, situation, there can be degrees of uh, virtues, right? We will talk about that in our next slide. Well, one or a group of actions does not determine the virtue of an agent. So, again this shows the example that virtue is more fundamental than actions. Because, uh, just one or a group of actions cannot be the source for inferring uh, the virtue of an agent. A virtue as the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy puts it, is a multi track disposition. This is a multi track disposition, that is, it is a part of our character trait. Now, there are degrees of virtue, there can be degrees of uh, courage uh, exhibited by an agent, but courage is a virtue only if it is lived and valued for its own sake. It is about having an impulse, a generous, honest, courageous, or any such virtuous impulse. So, now uh, let us think over it. Now, what is uh, virtue? And well, when we talk so much about virtue, let us talk about the degrees of. Uh, virtue. So, when we gave this example of generosity as a virtue, where you would, uh, where the agent would like to part with uh, his or her resource or food, uh, at the cost of uh, his or her own hunger, yet uh, uh, give it to somebody who is starving or perhaps is in uh, more need of it. Now, why does one do such an act? Why does that moral agent do such an act? If she or he does that act, because 
it uh, he values generosity then he has or she has a character of uh, a character trait of generosity so be doing generous actions how do generous actions come along or how do uh, how does uh, uh, courageous how do courageous actions come along how does one decide whether one wants to be courageous or not whether one wants to be generous or not and to which degree now how much of your food will you sacrifice and how often would you sacrifice it for the other that depends so this clearly indicates that the virtue classification also has degrees so uh, now if if uh, 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 let's talk about the drowning example now if all the three agents x y and z find that well uh, uh, the girl drowning is very deep into the sea and it has it is shark infested waters would uh, x y or z do the definitely the decisions would be uh, revised well uh, uh, x may consider in this second situation uh, the act of saving the girl as foolhardiness or almost stupidity if uh, it's a shark infested zone or the water is too deep or uh, x is not very good at swimming so consider this that uh, virtues that well the act of wor uh, working out of courage or valuing courage for its own sake can also have degrees valuing generosity or any other virtue for its own sake can have degrees so uh, i can be a ge um, generous to a certain extent i can be more generous so uh, we need to uh, keep in mind that well uh, generosity is about having an impulse an impulse to be generous honest courageous or any such virtue so this impulse or it is the thrust from the character or uh, from oneself with no other reason and when what particularly uh, uh, we mean by no other reason is uh, no no consequences or rule governance so this is the example of uh, virtue ethics now uh, why live a life of virtue now that comes out to be a question a very standard question that why does one live a life of virtue well the aristotelian answer has been we briefly talked earlier that a life virtuously lived is necessary for eudaimonia or loosely human flourishing now uh, for the initial understanding we did mention uh, uh, eudaimonia as uh, uh, both flourishing slash happiness but strictly speaking flourishing uh, may not be understood as happiness but closer to what could be called a good life or a meaningful life so a virtuous life uh, this is what aristotle put forth that a virtuous life uh, a life led according to virtues is necessary for uh, us to flourish in life and what is to flourish is not just to prosper but uh, to lead a good life a life of virtue enables the agent to live a go live a good life uh, or a meaningful life or a significant life it does not necessarily mean uh, comfortable or prosperous life rather it would mean a, a deeper significant life a life of virtue enables uh, the agent to live a good life a life that would not be possible had the virtues been sacrificed right so uh, uh, this was the aristotelian justification for following the life of virtue that eudaimonia or flourishing is necessary now let's just briefly look at what um, could be the problem with virtue ethics now various critics have argued that uh, does virtue ethics make any distinctive claim right if what if i say that the virtuous person is merely predisposed to do the right action the rightness of the action being arrived at from the principle or rule consequentialism deontology that the action emanates from because this is a very uh, tricky and difficult question that we uh, come across now what is more foundational is it the character trait or the action do i choose to be generous uh, do i reason it from uh, uh, rules and principles or uh, 
do I wish to be a generous person. Now, this, this uh, uh, crucial difference in conceptualizing uh, the primacy of either uh, uh, the character trait or the virtue or the action would determine what moral theory uh, innately appeals to you. Now, if you are uh, uh, concerned with uh, uh, every solution being uh, derived from a principle or a theory, well, uh, a principle, um, of course, virtue ethics is also theory, a principle or a rule or a format or an algorithm to come out of the answer, you are more likely to be a consequentialist or a deontologist. Uh, Let us look at some real life examples of what could be problems with uh, uh, the deontological or the uh, consequentialist claim and how, how, how does a difference between virtue ethics and consequentialism come about. Now, the virtue uh, uh, say uh, that other conditions being equal. Uh, Let us say, uh, uh, let us take the cliched example of a dam uh, to be built in an area, which would displace uh, say 1000 people, but will benefit uh, 50,000 people. Now, the consequentialist would say that well, uh, this minority ought to sacrifice their own habitat and uh, offer themselves to be relocated to equivalent or better, habi uh, uh, better habitat for the benefit of the goal. Now, this is a consequentialist uh, uh, argument. Uh, a deontological, a Kantian deontological argument could be that well, if we were in the majority, if those uh, 1000 people were in the a part of the majority and there were some other uh, 1000 pe people uh, within or e in that village itself, they require a relocation of 10 people for the welfare of those 1000 people. Would they be uh, comfortable or uh, asking those 10 people to move. So, likewise uh, they would uh, they should offer if they are happy with uh, uh, um, if they expect uh, the, uh, the minority to move or the 1000 people to move for the sake of the uh, majority then anybody else in the majority when shifts to the minority should also be ok with that. Now, if uh, uh, the, the 50,000 people expect the 1000 people to move and the 1000 people expect the uh, 10 people to move and the 10 people expect the 1 person to move. These are examples of well, uh, Kantian deontology that well, do unto others as you wish others would do to you. But the virtue perspective to this is that well, let us say if I want to be uh, a generous person, I am a kind person or those uh, uh, 1000 people are uh, uh, come from a culture where kindness is valued and they have uh, chosen to be very uh, 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 sharing, sacrificing and kind to the needs of others. So, without going into the moral mathematics, they would write uh, happily offer themselves, because these are those kinds of persons. So, very often uh, uh, this would make sense to people in the world out there trying to move things uh, and having to make. Uh, crucial sometimes ugly moral decisions that well, it is easier to pursue or to ask uh, 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 virtuous, uh, with virtuous I mean kindness as a virtue, with uh, it is easier to ask kind people for uh, uh, sacrifices than to ask uh, stubborn people. So, somebody who has committed to, uh, who wants to be kind or who has chosen to be kind will always be more sacrificing, right. So, uh, let us say of the uh, uh, of, of, of a uh, stickler for rules, who would like to well shut shop at 5 o'clock uh, every day evening, because that is the end of the working hours suppose. Now, to a, a strictly rule following person, he would shut the shop at exactly 5 o'clock no matter what, but if uh, 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 a longer queue people are waiting that particular day has a lot of demand or uh, uh, there is a certain requirement at his home which requ requires him to shut the shop earlier. Well, if he is very very determined about rule governance then he would not shut the shop one minute early, but he would also not shut the shop uh, uh, a minute late. Whereas, the virtuous one if is uh, uh, if the virtue to be followed is uh, 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 of, of uh, generosity or uh, any value such as kindness or uh, helpfulness, then well, uh, 
he would perhaps extend the time a little bit on the days when uh, the demand is much more. He would, uh, on the days when demand is a little less, he would be able to go back to uh, 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 the demand elsewhere and shut shop earlier. Now, the disadvantage of this kind of virtue thinking is it, it presumes or assumes it gives the uh, uh, it, it assumes a very high level of trust on the agent by the system. Now, if imagine if, if we uh, if the system gives a lot of uh, uh, trust puts a lot of trust in the uh, virtues of uh, um, the front line uh, employees. Now, without a, a, a strict rule based system, well it is likely that we fear or the distrustful part of us, uh, uh, in, uh, in us would fear that well, there would be a, uh, a collusion or a violation or a clear flouting of rules to uh, the uh, consumer's disadvantage. But, if virtue is uh, to be believed, well, uh, then the person in the front line no more becomes um, a blind follower of rules, but has some discretionary power which we can he can exercise at that uh, moment, because there cannot be a strict set of rules for every uh, possible situation. So, well, uh, let us see other disadvantages with virtues. Well, they have claimed that virtues are nothing but the predisposition to act rightly and nothing more. Character is nothing but the predisposition to perform the right acts. Now, I leave you with this question that character is it central or foundational and actions flow from it or is it uh, uh, are actions chosen and character is an uh, inference drawn from the various acts performed by an agent. That would be all for now.